Hey, what's up traders? First of all, apologies for the delay between videos. I was a bit unwell the past couple of weeks, but I'm back. And in today's video, I want to show you guys a few libraries that you might not be aware of, some PineScript open source libraries. These libraries can be imported into your scripts and they add a whole bunch of new sort of um, built-in functions that you can use in your scripts that uh, really help with the quality of life when it comes to coding certain um, features into PineScript. So before we begin, for those of you who aren't aware, I actually have my own library. So we'll start with that just to show you guys how to import it and give those of you who aren't familiar with libraries an idea of how they work. You just use the import keyword and then a TradingView username. If you type this in and hit control space, uh, the autocomplete will list all the libraries published by that TradingView username and the latest version. Click that and then you can give it an alias. So by typing as Zen, now I can use Zen as the alias for this library and I can say Zen dot control space and here are all the functions in my library. So let's have a quick look at some of the functions in my library. So I have a few quality of life functions. These are all um, things I commonly use in my scripts when I'm developing tools to analyze markets or strategy scripts to test. Um, I, I commonly use these sorts of functions. So things like getting how many decimals are in the quote price of the current market symbol, truncating the uh, excess decimal places. This is for things like sending automated alerts to Pine Connector or some third party to automate a system. Sometimes you need to shave off a few decimal places, especially on crypto, which can have um, dozens of decimals. I can convert numbers to whole numbers, so pips to whole numbers or um, points and vice versa. Um, there's a few other tools here that I won't get into specifically, um, but there are a couple of other functions here, uh, bars above the given moving average. So, so this will count how many bars are above the moving average over this look back period. Um, I also have a whole bunch of candlestick detection codes. So hammer and star candles, shooting stars and hammer candles, dojis, um, engulfing candles, uh, etc. There's also some filters in here. So date filters, day filters that will, um, that can be used to filter out specific trades on specific days or dates, etc., which allows you to do things like back test between a certain date range. So you can do walk forward analysis, that sort of thing. Anyway, you get the idea. This is basically what a library is and there are a ton of them. And in the rest of this video, I want to show you a few that I've found interesting that I've sort of stumbled across recently, which I think you guys might find interesting too. Now, some of you might have heard of all of these, but I'm sure plenty of you haven't. So let's get into it. So to see what I just saw, you can hold down control or command on a Mac and click on this, this link here. If I do that, that'll bring up the um, page for this library, which will give you the description of how it works. So let's have a look at a few others here. The first one I want to look at is the strategy library from the official TradingView uh, developer profile. Now I can use this purple keyword to reference that library. So here are a few functions this library has to work with. We have a bunch of tick conversion functions, which are pretty useful. I'm not sure why PineScript don't have a lot of these functions built in. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me why they wouldn't have these as built in functions. We have to use these third party libraries to access them, but uh, it is what it is. Um, so the main functions in this strategy library I wanna show you is the calculate position size by stop loss percent or stop loss ticks. So this takes a few parameters, the stop loss value, the risk percentage, and your entry price. And it will calculate, at least for stocks, I'm not sure if it works on Forex or crypto due to the complicated exchange rate interplay between um, currencies. You know, if you're trading Euro dollar, but your account is denominated in Aussie dollars, then you've got all these different <laughs> conversions that have to happen to get a position size that's accurate. I have a video on the channel somewhere where I knocked together a kind of hacky way to do that. It's not 100% accurate, unfortunately, but it's pretty close. I'll leave a link to that somewhere below if you're interested in that. But for those of you who are testing on stocks or um, CFDs, commodities, uh, this should work just fine. And so that's a really cool function there. Another one that I thought was pretty cool was the close all at end of session and the um, sort of sister function, close at end of session. These two functions will close out a trade on the close of the last bar of the trading session. So this is a pretty cool function for um, day traders in particular, intraday traders, because um, you can test your system and 
make sure that the trades are all closed out by the end of the day. So you're not holding over um, overnight gaps or weekends. I think this is a really cool function. So very useful for intraday traders. I uh, thought you guys might particularly find that interesting. Um, the last ones with this particular function, this strategy, oh, sorry, this particular library, the strategy library that I thought was interesting was the Sharp and Sortino ratios. So you can actually reference your system's Sharp ratio. If I come into performance summary, it'll be here somewhere. Here they are. Now this is just the default um, trading view strategy. So it's not worth looking into the stats, but we can get our Sharp ratio and Sortino ratio using this uh, trading view library, trading view strategy library, which is pretty cool because this updates on a bar by bar basis. So the strategy tester will only ever show you the end of results. So, so the um, total window of your back test with these functions, we can actually reference those. We could plot them if we wanted to on a label or a table or just a plot in our indicator status bar. And you can see how that sharp ratio develops over time. It can be a useful way to um, better understand your system and how its story plays out throughout the course of years and months. You know, um, sometimes we just look at these end of test results and they look great on paper, but we don't get the full story. We don't understand how these stats came to be over time. Sorry, just had to let my cat out of the room. I guess my uh, talking interrupted his really important nap. Um, anyway, that's it for this library. I think it's pretty cool. A couple of cool functions there that are useful. Let's have a look at these next few here. So the next one is this TA library. So trading view forward slash TA uh, version seven currently as of recording this, this contains um, technical analysis functions for which no pine built in exists. Again, I don't know why the trading view developers would release a library full of really useful functions that really probably should be built in functions. I don't know why some of these functions are not built in functions, but anyway, it's whatever. At least we have them in the form of these um, easy to access libraries, easy to import. So we can get things like the compound annual growth rate between two points in time. That's a pretty useful function for um, back testing. Um, there are also a ton of other functions. I won't go into all of them because there's, there's actually quite a lot in this particular library. Um, we have all time high and low, uh, which does not look forward. That's the key difference with this one. It uh, gets the all time high and low from the first histor historical bar to the current bar. So it doesn't look forward. So you could use ta.max or ta.min to get this value, but that's going to look forward on historical bars. Um, there's a bunch of other things here. I've honestly never heard of half of these functions that this library calculates, but I'll go over a couple here. We have the double exponential moving average. We have EMA2, which allows calculating an EMA value based on a float length input. Uh, we can calculate Don Donchian channels, um, Ichimoku. This one st stood out to me. This spits out a, a tuple or a uh, tuple, if you're French, <laughs> um, of all the different Ichimoku values, um, which is obviously useful because there is no built-in, as far as I remember, there is no built-in Ichimoku function. Um, this ta.ichimoku, um, I think is actually trying to reference this library. That's one way to uh, very easily get that, get those values without having to write the code yourself for calculating the Ichimoku. Now these last two are quite simple. So those are the official trading view libraries that I found interesting. There's a couple more here that I thought you guys might find valuable and that's the pine coders library. So these guys, uh, they're like a semi-official pine script coding sort of community. These guys contribute a lot of um, features that end up being adopted and implemented by the official trading view developers. And they have a few libraries here that I think are pretty interesting and valuable. Um, they're simple, but they do some things that I think you'll find interesting. So, so this particular library visible chart provides a whole bunch of functions that uh, calculate their values based on the visible bars on your chart. So let's have a quick look at a few. If I type in PC underscore visible uh, to reference the library alias, if I were to calculate anything based on these values, that would be what's on my chart right now. So this is useful for discretionary traders, um, you know, day traders, people who just want to analyze what they can see on their chart right now. So we have visible VWAP, volume weighted average price. That's a obviously very useful intraday trading signal. That's quite popular. Um, we can check the volume, 
and you get the idea. There's a whole bunch of functions here. One useful application of this, if I hide this particular script and go over to this script, this is my simple pullback strategy. I published this script on a old YouTube video. I'll leave a link to that somewhere below if you wanna check this particular script out. Um, but to demonstrate this visible chart range feature, um, I've just modified the script slightly to import the library in question, visible chart. And I've added a filter here, visible filter. So this will only return true if the current bar on my chart is a visible bar. It's within my chart pane. And my buy condition will only be true if this filter is met. So either this needs to be turned off or if it's turned on, then the current bar needs to be on my chart. So if we open up the uh, strategy tester here, here we have our total results for this historical back test. If I turn on this filter, watch what happens. Now we're only taking 28 trades because we're only taking trades um, from the left part of my chart up to the right part. Now my sell condition does not require um, to be visible on the chart. So if a trade is opened on my visible chart, it will, won't stay open once it leaves my chart. It'll, the exit reason will still trigger. But why this is useful is there's a couple of reasons. One is simple walk forward analysis. So just time window analysis. So I can zoom out my chart as much as I'd like. Go back to the start of, um, you know, an older year. We're in 2003 now. And I can analyze how my system performed during particular periods of time. So for example, let's see if we, let's say we wanted to see what happened during the 2008 financial crisis. So we could zoom into that sort of window, that sort of 2000, uh, mid 2006 to 2010. And I can see how this particular calamity affected my system. You can see here, it didn't really affect it much at all. That's because I'm using a market regime filter that um, doesn't take long trades when price is trading below a long-term moving average. So that keeps us out of dodgy bear markets. Uh, but anyway, that's one application of the time window visible bars um, feature from this library. Another reason would be simple debugging. So let's say you've got a script that's doing something you don't want it to and you don't understand why it's doing it. Um, sometimes you'll have a script that behaves in a way where it, it is useful to be able to see a single instance of um, what your script is doing. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to the final library in this short, in this example video that I want to draw your attention to, and that is the time library, again, by uh, Pine Coders. So this library is a simple quality of life library that just contains a whole bunch of functions that allow you to convert time, timestamps into simple text. So really useful for displaying information to yourself or to users of your script if you publish your scripts publicly. Um, it's useful for debugging again. And yeah, this is a, a library uh, containing a variety of time-related functions to calculate or measure time or format time into string variables. So I don't think I need to go into any more detail about this particular library. Um, I think it's obvious what this is useful for. And I think that'll wrap up today's video. Perhaps in uh, future videos, we'll go into more detail about these libraries and how to use them in a practical manner. And please, if you guys know of any libraries that you have found to be really useful in your own coding process, please uh, list them in the comments. I'd be very curious to see what you guys have found. Just don't post direct links if you can. Just uh, post the library name and people can search it on the TradingView platform because uh, YouTube tends to block links in the comments section because of how many scammers post links on financial market related videos. So yeah, please share any um, script tools you've found valuable out there. That'll do it for today's video. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you found it interesting, it really helps the channel out and it helps me stay motivated to come back to share more information with you guys in the next video. I hope you have a fantastic week. Best of luck with your trading and take care. Goodbye.